Hello my friends, in this video we're going to explore uncertainty about the future and how to deal with all of the feelings that come along with that, like the anxiety and the fear and the excitement. So I've been dealing with this and finding some strategies to help with it um, with my own business and, and the recent growth, um, but I imagine that if you are uh, going through a big career change or growing your business as well, that you've probably had to face these kind of feelings and you may have um, develop some strategies or techniques to work with them. So I'm really going to be curious to hear your perspective on this. I'm going to share mine first. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so what sparked this video was that I was noticing I was doing some like self-sabotaging behaviors, or maybe we can call them like coping mechanisms, um, which I'll dive into in a little bit. Uh, but that led me to do a lot of like journaling and self-reflection to kind of get to the root of this, which is these negative feelings. So generally, I embrace the excitement about the future and, and what that has in store. But I kind of shy away from the fear and the anxiety. And I deal with that in a way that isn't super healthy for me. So again, here's my understanding. We respond to the unknown or the uncertainty in the future with fear, anxiety, and possibly excitement. But I've been realizing that, yeah, the excitement comes along with the fear and the anxiety. They, they're, you know, not mutually exclusive. So, you know, reflecting on this, I do realize change is uncomfortable, even if it is for the better. Like as humans, we want to stick with what we're comfortable with. And when we're learning and growing and changing, it's going to be uncomfortable, at least for a little while until we adapt to the new normal. And um, I've been dealing with these with these feelings since um, since I was in college, honestly. So and for the, the last five, six years of, of running my own business. But they're kind of amplified in the past few months because um, six months ago, it was just me. It was my wife and I running the business. We had worked with contractors one off a couple of times. Um, but now we're working with like 10 different people on the business. So we have 10 people on payroll. Some of them are helping out full time, some of them part time and some of them on a more like as needed basis. But it went from like zero to 100 relatively quickly. And this summer we're bringing even more people on board full time. So the payroll is growing. The pressure on me is growing because, um, yeah, it's not just Devlin and Taylor, my wife, like figuring it out anymore. Now it's like, you know, there are, there are more and more people and families like relying on, on um, the business and the vision and the success. So it's a lot of pressure. And that's why I think a lot of these feelings have been getting like amplified recently. But, but you know, we believe in the vision and the uncertainty will always be there. So I need to learn how to be comfortable with that uncertainty now. And that's what I've been working on instead of telling myself, oh, I'll be comfortable when we hit this goal or when we achieve this. And, and that's what I've been kind of telling myself. I realized since I since I was a freshman in college and I was like, I need to learn how to be successful and like financially independent and all of that. Um, it's been this like constant pressure and this constant like anxiety that I always need to be doing something to to work towards my future success that I kind of don't take care of like my present self um, as well as I should be. And, um, and that's what I'm really realizing. It's like, if I keep putting this off to a future date, it's never going to come because if I'm always learning and growing, there's always going to be a degree of uncertainty. I'm always going to have new goals. I don't want to put off like, you know, my own mental health and wellness, like perpetually, <laughs> um, you know, to make my future self happy and that time never come. So that's what I'm dealing with. Again, if you can relate to this, let me know in the comments, um, but, but here's how I know when I'm slipping. And here's, again, when I realize like there's a problem, like I need to kind of explore this. This this right here. This happened like last weekend again, even after I've been working through these feelings for a month. I'm working from my laptop while watching a movie on Saturday at midnight. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many nights I've done this. Like this is this is how I know I'm slipping. It's when I'm not setting boundaries between like work life, personal life. So I'm either work, yeah, working or feeling anxious because I should be working is my coping mechanism or self-sabotaging behavior for like kind of ignoring the fear and like deeper anxiety of like possible like failure. Um, and, and, and what that may mean as well, which again, I guess in my head, it's like, I'm like trying to ignore that. It's like failure seems like this like catastrophic thing. It's like, you know, this, yeah, catastrophic event, but really failure 
and, and again, this is part of how I'm working through this, failure is a learning opportunity, right? So um, if we do fail in whatever capacity that means, we're coming out stronger on the other end because we, we can learn from our mistakes. So um, the coping mechanisms themselves, again, it's like, that's the piece that I'm realizing, like, this is not healthy. I need to explore why I'm doing this and I need to try to work away from it because it, it my, my mind doesn't want to just like relax and like, Think about things that aren't related to the business or the community or the brand or um, the new the new people that we're hiring. Um, and again, yeah, I think that's like the trick that my brain plays on itself. It's like if I'm constantly worried about doing something for the business or if I'm constantly like have my laptop open with something work related up on it, if I'm worried about finishing that specific task, I don't need to be worried or afraid about the bigger idea of like failure. So I realized this about myself, like within the last like couple of weeks, and it took me years to realize this, but I've been doing this like all along. Um, It's like, it it makes me more comfortable. It's like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm stressing about these, like, you know, individual tasks, it's like a way to keep myself safe and keep myself feel like I have control over like the bigger picture and the the longer term vision. Um, And I think to a degree, obviously working on the business is an important piece of like growing the business and achieving the vision but I don't need to be doing it on a Saturday night um, while I'm watching a movie with my wife, <laughs> obviously. So it's just setting those better boundaries. And I guess that brings us into the next piece here is like how I'm dealing with this and like what has helped me the most um, are these different things that help me kind of live in the moment and be more present in the moment instead of having my mind, you know, say, oh, you should be working on X, Y, and Z right now. So I've been working up this like yoga habit, starting with like once a week and now we we'll, we've worked up to like four or five times per week. So that helps me a lot. Um, just like get active and, and stay in touch with my breath meditation as well. So more recently I've started meditating every morning, trying to like build my focus, but also just like be more aware of like these thoughts and feelings that are like coming up within me so that I don't ignore them by like just working (laughs) again, not the healthiest thing for me journaling too. So I don't think I would have like had some of these breakthroughs or realizations about myself if I wasn't journaling every night. So that has helped a lot. Just exploring, my, you know, processing my feelings around this stuff. When I do notice myself slipping, kind of ex- exploring that further and trying to figure out like why I'm doing those things. So that has helped a lot. Um, reading as well. So reading helped has helped guide this um, help helped guide this journey. Uh, so reading about just like processing some of these emotions, recognizing some of these like self sabotaging behaviors or coping mechanisms, um, and then also some books too to help me feel like more connected to the bigger picture and like see the bigger picture and all of that. So that has helped trying to get enough sleep. Um, yeah, that's obviously important. I realized when I haven't gotten like, you know, seven and a half, eight hours of sleep consistently, like after three or four days of that, it gets a lot harder to kind of stave off these feelings of fear and anxiety. Like my mental fortitude is like weaker, so to speak. So sleep I'm realizing is a very important piece of this puzzle and no surprise to anyone. I'm sure. And then kind of like I hinted at earlier, like reflecting on what failure really means. Um, Yeah, it's like this fear of like things like not working out. But um, at least for me, like when I explore what that really means, it's like it's not it's not this catastrophic end of the world thing where we're like getting evicted from our home and stuff like that. And, And I know and I'm sure I mean, there are catastrophes that could lead to that that are out of my control completely. And I know, um, you know, some people it is. Fear, failure does mean really bad things like getting evicted from your home and not being able to pay the bills and stuff like that. So, you know, everyone's coming at this from a different spot, but reflecting on what that really means, because if we do explore, it may not be as bad as like our mind thinks it is like what failure actually looks like, especially if there are lessons that we can learn or takeaways that we can have that can help us be, be stronger or, um, or better or, or wiser in the future. So so yeah, even within the failure, again, that's, um, it's a, it's a learning lesson. It's like investing in uh, your own education. So if you fail, you're learning from it. It's not a true failure in that sense. That's what I'm kind of realizing with that piece. So this is my approach to dealing with all of this. I'm kind of doing it all at once. I've been trying to like rebuild these habits, like slowly, um, over the past like month and a half, two months or so. And it is helping. But like I said, just this Saturday, I was slipping on my laptop at midnight, um, feeling like I need to work <laughs> and that that again, I'm like, I need to make this into a video. I can't be the only one dealing with this. 
Um, and I'm sure some of you have have worked through this over the course of years instead of a couple of months. So I would really love to see your perspective on this. So please share it with us in the comments. Maybe you um, maybe you you have some of these feelings and you haven't explored them very much, and you're and you know this video is a bit of a wake up call. Or maybe this is all like common sense to you, and you're like, wow, Devlin's a uh, Devlin isn't as far along with some of this stuff as he should be by now. Um, no judgment, you, you know. But if you if you have any suggestions or tips or perspective on this at all, please share it with us because um, I, you know I, I'm going to be reading every comment, and I'm sure some some other people here would would get some value from that as well. So thank you for making it to the end and um, listening to me talk a bit more about what I'm going through, and I will talk to you all soon.